In this tutorial, we're going to create an interactive map. It looks kind of like this. This is North America. You have a lot of options for different maps. I think most countries in the world have their own maps in this plugin. And the way I've set this one up is if we click on one of these areas, right now I only have the USA set up, but you can do this for Canada, Mexico, USA, or any country. You can click on it, and it goes to another page where it shows specifically the US in this case. And we have highlighted Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and California because these are locations for a fictitious business where this map would go on their website. Click on any one of these locations and it opens the specific map for Oregon in this case. And then these areas are not clickable right now, but you could have these go to specific pages for services you offer in those locations or your client offers in those locations. And you can have this map drill down and have people find the specific locations and services they need really easily and visually using this awesome interactive map. You could also use this to display data, going from global data to local data, depending on what you want to display to your visitors. And if you have any questions or comments throughout this tutorial, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpress from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And let's get started. First thing we have to do is install a plugin. So let's go into the dashboard. Let's go to plugins and add new. And let's look up Geo Interactive Maps. And it's Interactive Geo Maps. So I got that in the wrong order. This is the one we want right up here. There are a couple of map plugins that do something similar, but none of them I've found works as well as with what I'm going to show you today as this one right here. It has a lot of great reviews, a fair number of installs, compatible with the current version of WordPress. Everything checks out. If you're installing this on a live site, make sure you back up your site first just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare these days, but if something does go wrong, you have a backup you can convert back to. If you need help with that, there's a link in the description down below to help you back up your site. When you're ready, click on install now and then activate. And for this notice, I always press skip, but you can press allow and continue if you want them to track diagnostic data anonymously, of course. And once you're done with that, we end up on the maps page. This is where we create our maps. To create a map, we first go to add new. We give our map a name. This name is something descriptive for you. I'm going to call mine North America. And you see our map right down here. And currently it's the whole world, but we want to have it be just North America. So if I scroll down, there is a map settings meta box down here. Under general details and map to display, we can choose all kinds of different maps. And there's ultra, high, and low. I think those are the three options. And those are basically how much detail the map has. So Ultra has the most detail. It's also the biggest file size for that reason. High has the medium level of detail. And low has the lowest amount of detail. And the one you choose will depend on what your needs are. Obviously, the higher resolution ones, the Ultras, will load slower on your website. And I don't think they add that much. It's hard to tell in the world map because everything's so small. But if we go to a smaller country like Albania, let's go to Albania Low. And this is the low detail map, and it looks pretty good to me. If we go to Albania High, this is the high detail map, and you can see the borderline's a little more jagged because it has more of the rough details of the borders. Let's zoom in. And as I zoom in, it zooms out. So that's great. Anyways, this is as close as I can get. If you look really close at the border, so I'll switch back to the low. You'll see it smooths all the borders a little bit on the low. So that's the difference between high and low, and ultra would have even more accuracy in the borders. So if that's what you need, super accuracy, then choose ultra. But if you don't need that and you want these maps to load faster on your website, then just choose the low. The low works pretty much every time. You also search. I'm going to search for North America, and I'm going to choose low. And here we have North America. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, Click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. We can change the projection type from Miller to Elbers USA for US maps or Mercado, Mercado. If I knew what those were, I'd explain that to you, but I don't. But what I can do is click on them. I can see how the map changes and then choose the one that I like the best. And I like, for this map, I like the Miller projection the best. For map description, let's enter North America. Now that we've chosen our map, we can highlight things. If you go to visual settings, you can change the background color. Currently it's clear. You can change it to whatever you want, whatever fits with your theme or your website. Put that back to transparent. 
You can change the border colors. Make the borders red. That stands out. Put that back to default. You can change the border width. Those are quite thick borders. Don't even that thick. Keep it on one. You can change the map height. You can change the map width. You can change the font family on the map. Inherit means it just takes whatever font style is already applied on the page or to that section of the page. So you just leave it as inherit if you want. And then we can highlight specific regions. For our North America map, there aren't that many regions. It's really just Canada, Greenland, USA, Mexico. It looks like Central America a little bit down there. Other maps have way more things to highlight, but we only have that handful of things. If I click on add new region, we can add a region like Canada. The region code is on the right hand side over here. We see all the region codes for North America, depending which map you choose. You have a different list of region codes on the right. I see Canada right here. The region code is CA and we can see a lot of other things, a lot of other countries we can highlight listed here. So I'm just going to add CA right here and that's going to highlight Canada. You can add a tooltip, like this is Canada. You can also add action content. This can be a URL that when you click on Canada, it's going to take you to another page. That's what we're going to do later on in this tutorial. We're going to take you to a page of the provinces, then you can click on a province and go to that province's map, and then on and on we go. So that's how we add a region. Well, that's one way to add a region. Another way is we find our region code on the left and just click on plus. And that pops in a new meta box for the United States. It fills in the region code. It fills in the tooltip. No action content. We have to do that manually. And now we see the United States also has a region on here. And we can add in Mexico. Click on the plus. We have Mexico. And we can change our fill color, hover color, empty color. And you can pick the click action. I'm going to choose open URL. You can have only the active regions shown. So if I turn this on, only the things we've highlighted are visible on the map. So we have Canada, the United States, and Mexico. If I turn this on again, we see the other places we have not highlighted in the map. The Caribbean, Central America, Greenland, but we can take those off individually if we want to. So if we scroll down even farther than this little toggle, we have an include regions and exclude regions. AQ is for Antarctica. This is excluded by default. We can add a comma and then add Greenland. Just have to find the Greenland code up here, which is GL. And tab out of that field, and we see Greenland is now gone. You can also add markers to the map. To do that, go up to the map view, click on Add Marker here. That adds the marker, which is right here. And then you can adjust the marker by going into the Round Markers tab. Let's call this one border. I'm going to change the latitude to 49 because the 49th parallel is where the land border is between Canada and the USA. And there we have a marker right on the border. You can put the border wherever you want as long as you know the latitude and longitude of where you're placing it. You can also add tooltip content. I'm just going to make this border. And you can add action content which means you can add a URL or other content to trigger when someone clicks on it. You can change the radius of the marker, the fill color, the hover color, and what the action does. For this main map of North America, I'm going to remove the marker. And it should be disappearing any second now. And it's not. We'll just publish anyway. There we go. Now it's gone. And now we have a short code right over here. I'm going to copy the short code and I'm going to put it on a page. Let's make a page called North America. Look up the short code widget. Paste it in there. And now we've got the North America page. And this short code will work inside of page builders, Elementor, Divi, Beaver Builder, anywhere where short codes are accepted, this will work. Let's view the page. There's North America. Nothing is clickable yet. I can click wherever I want, nothing happens. We're gonna fix that in just a minute. Now let's quickly make another map. We're gonna call this map United States, and we're going to look up a map of the United States. I'm gonna choose low quality, so that means the borders are not as sharply, de sharply defined, and also the map size is smaller. What I didn't show you earlier when we're adding markers with latitude and longitude 
you can actually click wherever you want and it updates the coordinates. This is where we clicked right here. Click coordinates. Watch those change as I click around the map. So that's pretty cool. And for this example, if you recall, we have a business that has some locations throughout the world. And in this example, we're going to put a couple into Washington, for example. So we're going to have some businesses up in Washington. So we want to make this clickable. We want to have a map of Washington so we can show the locations of that business in Washington on another map. So I'm going to highlight Washington. I'm going to find the code for Washington over on the right. It's going to click on plus to add that region in. And we see it highlighted and maybe there's some in Idaho and maybe Oregon and California. So just on the west coast of the USA or western region, Oregon and California. So this is where our fictitious business operates in those four states. We're going to make each of these clickable in just a minute. For now, I'm going to click on publish. I'm going to get this map short code, make a new page, and I'm going to call this page United States. Get the short code widget, put that right in there, publish, and when we view the page, we see it's just the United States with our regions here highlighted. And we can also change the tooltip. So this is a local business, I guess not local, but a business that has locations in those areas. We can probably add that information into the tooltip. So if we have in Washington two locations, let's add that to the tooltip. And in Idaho, we have one location, Oregon three locations. And California, maybe there's five locations. Update that. So now the tooltip's going to have more information about the business, how many locations it has in each of those places. And I'm going to add another map for each one of these states. I'll do one of them on camera. The other ones will function the exact same way, and then we'll link them all up to our final product. So let's add Washington. Let's go to add new Washington. Let's look up Washington low. Here's Washington with all the counties. And I'm going to add our locations. I'm just going to click on plus beside Garfield, Klickitat, and Skamania. I think we only had two locations in Washington, so I'm going to take Garfield off. Okay, so there's our two locations. Click on Publish because Washington is all done. Let's get the short code. Add it to a new page. Let's call this Washington Locations. I add the short code widget. Paste that in there, publish, view page. So now I've created Washington as a map. Now I'm gonna create the other three states and we're gonna link them all together once I've created them. The other three I'm gonna create off camera because it's the exact same process. I'll be right back when they're all done. Okay, so now we have California done. We have Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. They're all highlighted with the respective number of regions that we defined on the USA map, which we'll see again in just a minute when we link these all together. So our North America map is the main one. Now if I go to United States using the URL or using the address bar, we see United States here. We want to copy this link and go back into our map editor and we want to edit the North America map. Go to the regions, open the United States. And for the action, I want to paste in the URL for the United States. So when someone clicks on United States on the map, it takes them to the page with the United States map. And down here, I want to make sure we have a click action defined, which is going to be open new URL. Update that. And now we want to go into the USA map. We want to add in our click actions for each one of these states. So let's go to regions again, go to Washington. Let's open our Washington page, copy the URL and paste it right there. Idaho, get the URL and paste it right there. Oregon, get the URL, paste it right there. California, get the URL and paste it right there. And then scroll down and make sure you have a click action defined. Currently it's none. I'm going to change this to open URL and then I'm going to click on update. And now we're going to go to our main map, which in this case we're going to call North America. Now let's close all the others. So this is the main map for this fictitious website. And this could be any kind of map you want. It could be just a specific state and counties within that state. And then someone clicks on it and they go to the next location further down on your map sequence. So in this case, I click on the United States and it takes us to the United States map. 
And here we can click on Idaho and we see the location in Idaho. You can make this clickable and then this would take you to possibly a page with address information and hours and whatever other kind of details you need for this location. You can also click on Washington. We see two locations in Washington. And then if we go to Oregon, there are three locations. And California, there are five locations. This is of course all made up. You could have 15,000 locations in any one of these states if you wanted or whatever country in the world, whatever country is listed inside the map builder. But you can see how powerful this is visually guiding people through to these areas for your business. And if we go to mobile, we see it still works on mobile. Let's go back to North America. You can of course add text links with the with text that's saying back. So it takes you back to other pages. It doesn't do that automatically in the plugin. But here if I click on the USA and then go to Idaho, it all works just fine as you'd expect. But you have to click on an element to see the tooltip. Whereas on the desktop, you just hover over it to see the tooltip. That's the only major difference. And these maps cover a large part of the planet. So if we go back to the dashboard and we go to maps, let's just add a new map. And then if we scroll down just to where we choose our maps, we can see all the places, all the map types we can choose. There are world regions and continents. Every one of these will show these specific continents, obviously. And then we also have different ways to display things. For example, the whole world we can have, instead of showing borders, we could have it just be the outline. So there are no borders in this case. And you also can't highlight regions when you're just on the outline. We can have a time zone map of the world, which shows all the different time zones, which you can highlight individually. As we can see on the right here, we can highlight specific time zones instead of specific countries. There are specific countries. It's going to scroll through these so you can see what they are. I don't know which one you'd be looking for, but hopefully the one you're looking for is on this list. I am not sure if it's all the countries in the world, but there's definitely a large list here. And most countries have two or three map versions, definitely high and low, and some also have ultra. And then we have a focus on the USA with all its unique states. And then we have a focus on Canada as well once we get there. Here's Canada and its provinces, Mexico. And I don't know if they're called states or provinces, Mexico, I'm sorry. But there is a focus on Mexico as well. Portugal has specific maps for different districts and things. So you saw a list of all the countries there are. And then the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Portugal have more detailed various types of map for their countries. Other countries obviously have those more specific regions as well. It's just that they don't have their own map in this plugin. And we also have some plugin settings. If you add the Google API key here, you can get the latitude and longitude coordinates for a marker whenever you place it, and you get them automatically instead of entering them manually. You can enable live preview, which was only chose a different map. It would show up right in the preview section. You also turn that off. You also have the ability to turn off the save preview image. Here it says it can cause server problems sometimes. So if you find there are problems using this plugin, try turning this off. And we can also change the tooltip field from text area to a rich editor or text input. And we also have performance over here. We can change the way the map loads. Having lazy load on is always a great idea. And then map features, you can enable zoom or disable zoom. And those are all the settings. It's not a settings heavy plugin, but it's definitely an awesome way to add maps to your website or your client site. And this is the plugin page right here. It has a pro version too, I believe. I don't know what the pro version does, but the free version for every time I've used it has been more than enough for what I needed. But the pro version might add some more awesome features that I don't even know about. But this is the plugin page here. I'll link to this in the description down below if you want to check it out. And if you found this tutorial useful, you'll probably enjoy this one right here, which shows you how to add images hotspots to your website or this one right here which shows you how to add interactive image maps to your website which are different than what we saw here this is an interactive map this is an interactive image map if you want to know the difference watch that video and you'll find out but if you haven't done so yet click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos my name is Bjorn Allpass and the WP Learning Lab until next time keep crushing it and I'll see you in the next video